वेलकम टू यूपीएससी पाठशाला yeah so today we will be beginning with uh, environment all right so we will be looking at ecology and functions of ecosystem so environment ecology basically more or less they are related concepts however environment is a superset and ecology is a part of environment we will see as we look at their definitions how they are different and then subsequently uh, we will also look at the ecosystem and what functions does the ecosystem have so these are the things which we will look at before that let us discuss first the environment subject as a whole so as we know in anyhow in mains also you have gs paper 3 in which you have questions related to environment most of the question as of now they do uh, come related to your current affairs however uh, we should also not underestimate the role of the static knowledge as well because especially because even in mains exam you will now find questions where in the first part of the question would expect you to know the static concept and the second part may expect you to apply that or talk about something related to that with respect to your current affairs for example if you talk about 2016 there was a question what do you understand by allelopathy and then a subsequent application based at how it is impacting the agriculture etc that was the thing but allelopathy the concept is a you know a static thing you can just read in standard books and the notes which will be given to you and also as of now if we look at the trends of course uh, it is tilting towards uh, the current affairs even in your prelims examination but at the same time please understand the syllabus which you have it does include static so the idea has to be that you have to cover the static portion as well and not become lazy and leave the static content out just thinking because in the last 5 years the trend has been completely current affairs related so i would leave uh, the static part no you can't do that because of two reasons your static part helps your current affairs secondly you never know if you know the tables how upsc can turn the table on you all right so to a good extent static part should also be remembered should also be understood by you all and we will relate it during our course of this uh, complete uh, lecture series we will relate the static with current affairs and we'll ensure that there is a synergistic approach to this subject so let us move forward uh, beginning with ecology so what is ecology so when a, whenever a word which has logy it is nothing but talking about the study so again over here also it is talking about uh, studying something so studying what studying the eco so you know we talk about ecosystem so what do you mean by eco eco friendly ecosystem so eco basically talks about your uh, region your habitat your surrounding so or a uh, a habitat if we talk about in that habitat what we have in a habitat we will have biotic or you know organisms then abiotic things will be present that means non living things will also be present you will have your rivers also flowing you will have your soils also there at the same time you will have organisms animals plants so basically it is the study since the word has logy that is why it is a study so study of what study of the interaction interaction of what the organisms that is the biotic part of the environment so the organisms among themselves and the interaction of these organisms with their abiotic surrounding as well so these two uh, interactions are studied in the concept of ecology all right then when we move forward so uh, biotic and abiotic factors so what are these two different factors biotic bio related to life so biotic factors or biotic things which are living things things which have life you have you know we also have life right human beings you have plants you have animals you have amoeba all those organisms single cell to multicellular organisms when you talk about abiotic so without any life basically right so you have factors like temperature and all that but here with respect to ecology we'll be talking about uh, your rivers your rain your mountains all those area where these 
animals and plants will be habiting, uh, having their habitat. All right. So, and then let us understand what is environment. So, surroundings or conditions in which a person, animal or plant lives. So, now I am in this room over here. So, the sofa behind me, the walls, the curtains, these are my environment as of now. Right. So these are abiotic factors of my environment. Probably there might be a presence of one or two mosquitoes here and there or some insect. So that is the biotic factor, biotic thing as well surrounding me. So this presently is my environment over here. All right. So one more thing to be noted here is when things are almost the same sort of thing, it is it should be made at a point to understand the nuances, the difference between them. Because a question may come on those nuances. A question has come about what do you understand by an ecosystem? And they give a statement which is more or less on the similar lines. So the concept needs to be absolutely clear. We should not ignore thinking that it is very simple and we would be able to answer. Why? Because the questions may be based on that slight differences. Secondly, if the questions are easier, it becomes more important for each and every one of you to answer that question because this exam is a comparative exam. So the easier the question, the more onus is on you to ensure that you solve it. All right. Then the next concept of it, we have the level of organization. So what do you understand by the levels of organization? Now, there can be a question on this level of organization with respect to the ascending or decreasing order of level of organization. So at the individual level, we will not have any confusion, the single individual. Then we come to a population, right? So single individual of fishes are shown over here. So there is a single fish, you know, uh, a lot many fish together will give you the population of that fish. All right. And then you have your community, one particular community having these many things. We'll go into the details of that. Then ecosystem. So what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is basically, uh, you know, um, you can say one of the shortest type of area, which is self-sustainable, which is self-sustainable. So see in community, there was no presence of water. But suddenly in ecosystem, you see that the water is present because an ecosystem should be such that it is sustainable on its own. All right. So it should be sustainable on its own. So that is why uh, you saw the suddenly there is a presence of water over here. So it's a self-sustainable uh, block of organization, which is an ecosystem. We'll go into its details as well. Then you have the next hierarchy is the biome and biosphere. So a uh, biosphere is basically uh, the superset. So what is biosphere? Biosphere is a region where life exists. So the interaction of your land, of your oceans, of your atmosphere, at this juncture, the life is existing, right? So it's completely a biosphere. Now this biosphere may have different biomes. It can be a biome which is desertic in nature or which is rainy in nature or which is of grassland region, etc, etc. So we should remember this, uh, is, uh, this order either in ascending manner or in descending manner. So individual, uh, let us go into the details. Basically individual organism is an individual living being that has the ability to act or function independently. One single isolated individual we are talking about. A single plant species, an animal, fungi, bacteria, etc., etc. Right. So they are the basic unit of taxonomy. So what is taxonomy? Taxonomy is the branch of science concerned with classification, classification, especially of organisms. We, uh, you know, we have our own classification as human beings. So whatever that classification, the lowest level of classification would be that single individual. So this individual belongs to which phylum and then which this and which that, all those things, it ends at an individual. So it is that basic unit of taxonomy. Then uh, we talk about population. So population will be group of interbreeding organisms. So they can interbreed. 
all right they can you can say they can naturally interbreed so then we will call it an uh, a population right uh, maybe uh, technologically or scientifically you can have cross breeding as well but here we are talking about natural interbreeding of organisms so group of interbreeding organisms occupying a defined area at a particular period of time so that is a population the main thing to remember here is interbreeding of uh, interbreeding organisms then we come to the community so uh, it is said that mostly the community is named after a dominant plant form so you have uh, evergreen forest or you have grasslands or you have uh, you know uh, sh shrublands etc so in that manner you are defining basically you are defining that in that region which is the most ubiquitous kind of a plant based on that you are defining that community right so then in this community there is a classification there is a classification of uh, there is a classification of major uh, between distant difference basically between majority community and minority community so what is a majority community of course majority larger the size you know it's it has a large size it is well organized and relatively independent so this majority community may not be dependent on things of another minority community all right so a grassland would be sufficing on its own right the grassland will have the grassland you are saying grassland because of the presence of grass but grasslands will have many other things as a result of which it can sustain on its own and it is very large in size in the same manner tropical evergreen forest also can be a majority community so tropical evergreen forest you when you talk about you have tropical plants over there uh, trees over there but you have various other biotic abiotic factors which is which is ensuring that it is sustainable on its own when you talk about minority community they will be largely dependent on the neighboring communities right and they are a part a subgroup of the majority community so what is an example a mat of ticks on a buffalo so uh, on a buffalo there thrive a lot of ticks a kind of insect which thrives on, uh, on it right so this basically a mat of ticks is what it's a minority community it is needing the presence of buffalo to thrive on it right and it completely comprises as a minority community it will not be sustainable on its own but this buffalo will actually be a part of the majority community let us say if a buffalo is present in the grassland right so that grassland is a majority community and your ticks tick mat on your on the buffalo is a minority community thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed watching this video then don't forget to like comment and share the video subscribe to upsc pathshala and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates Don't forget to register for our free live classes. Find the link in the description box. This is your chance to prepare yourself with personal trainers.